1998-99 season certainly won't go down as one of the greatest in Everton's history by any means. But it was another season of drama, tension and footballing highs and lows. If truth be told, by Easter Monday evening, Everton were odds on with the bookmakers to be relegated. It was another season of change. Howard Kendall's third spell in office ended, Walter Smith took over the Goodison hot seat. The face of Everton Football Club was changing. A new and likely hero was to emerge from a far-flung place, as Kevin Campbell became an almost instant legend. But it was to be farewell to another Goodison hero, Duncan Ferguson, and the man who sold him, Peter Johnson, resigned as chairman directly as a result. But what a blue Monday Sheffield Wednesday's Benito Carboni made it for Everton fans. A chance to grab a lifeline really looked to be on the cards when Ibrahima Bakayoko's goals earned a priceless 2-1 win at Blackburn in March. But hope didn't spring eternal. Consecutive defeats by Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool followed. Everton slipping back into the danger zone and desperately needing to get a win from somewhere. Sheffield Wednesday at Goodison became a must-win game. Wednesday were in a bit of trouble themselves. Danny Wilson's side had lost their last five Premiership matches. And Everton got off to the best possible start. Hunsworth. Oh, Newsom left it to Sernicek. Gaping goal! And a goal for Francis Jeffers. What a howler involving Pavel Sernicek and John Newsom. Well, it's probably you know, one of the most disappointing results I've had in, in my managerial career, I must say. Um, you know, uh, it was a big game for us there. Um, Sheffield Wednesday hadn't won in their previous five matches. We had been struggling along, a couple of draws, and, um, you know, we were needing the points badly. And uh, we started and played very well in the first half of the match there. And uh, then, after getting ourselves in front during that period, contrived to give away, you know, two of our worst goals defensively this season and uh, I think that uh, one of the worst aspects was that uh, psychologically that uh, took a bit out of everybody and we didn't show the proper response to that either and consequently at the end of that game you know uh, everything was, was looked upon in a, in a bad light and there was doom and gloom surrounding uh, the whole of Goodison from support, from players, from management, directors, everybody um, felt so disappointed that after getting in front and after playing well in the first half, that we gave it away in the manner in which we did. Coventry came to Goodison six days later for a match that somehow, some way, had to be the starting point for an Everton revival. And this is a free kick in very dangerous territory. Dacour who scored in 40 seconds in the Merseyside derby. What does he do here? It took a deflection off the wall! Just scuttled wide. Gemmill. Jeffers to use his pace maybe here. And he's got the better of Burrows. Barbie's in the middle. And he has failed to put it in. Edmund got something in the way of it. That was a wonderful, wonderful chance for Everton. Berteng. With the throw away by Ball, is McAllister looking for what would have been a sumptuous volley had it been allowed to trouble. Jeffers, good attack here, Gemmill to Barmby, Williams has missed it, Campbell! He must score, he does score, a first ever Everton goal for Kevin Campbell! And what a goal that could be in Everton's season! Everton are ahead, and the lone signing from Turkey, just look at that face, 
it says a lot. Williams vitally missed his kick, and Campbell showed great composure to nick it past the keeper and score the goal that puts Everton one up. Referee says free kick. Here is Dacour to take it. He's got Kevin Campbell lurking with intent on the far post, and Shorts come forward too. Matarazzi from an angle they weren't expecting. Saltbeck caught in possession. Everton still looking like they wanted a bit more. Ball. Campbell. Good run from Kevin Campbell. Terrific stuff. And behind by Burrows. But that was excellent play by Kevin Campbell, who here is giving Everton a new cutting edge. It's a good performance this by Everton. Dacour. Terrific run. He's been the inspiration. Oh, and here's Jeffers. Could have been two. Goalkeeper hits Campbell, goes behind, ping pong in that penalty area. And it's a goal kick, but it could have been 2 0. Really good football. Back in again. Huckabee's got acres of room out there. Aloisi's gone to the near post. Huckabee's gone down. And a red card for Matarazzi. Oh, he's in tears. Matarazzi is in tears. It was his second offence. He'd been riding his luck a bit. Well, was there any contact? Was there any contact? Here's Grant. Campbell. Decent little turn. Oh, Grant's here. He can make a big contribution. This is something that hit a hand by the look of it. That did hit a hand, surely, of David Burrows. But there is no penalty given. Well, I could have sworn this hit Burrows' hand. It did. Under three minutes to go. Grant. Barnby. Campbell's in there if he can be found. Here is Campbell. He's done it again. 2 0. And the points are wrapped up. Goodison Park goes potty. What a day for Kevin Campbell and what a day too for Everton. Grant with a very good ball. Barnby and on to Campbell who at the second attempt put it home and Everton surely now have the points. 2-0. And there's the final whistle. Everton end a losing run of four games. A thunderous atmosphere and a final scoreline of Everton 2, Coventry City 0. The next test came at St James's Park, Newcastle, a ground where Everton hadn't won since Boxing Day 1987. Scott Gamble inside to Don Hutchison. Campbell towards the edge of the penalty, a chance for Campbell! Everton in front, inside a minute. Kevin Campbell, a goal scorer. Pass from Ketspire. Handball there from David Weir, it's put in at the far post. But the referee awards a penalty to Newcastle. Shearer against Thomas Myra. Shearer right footed, great save from Myra. How important could that be to Everton's fight against relegation? Dacour on halfway. Looks for the run of Jeffers and Campbell. Campbell. Out to Jeffers. Right hand side. Campbell arriving at the near post. Campbell! And Gibbons missed it. Kevin Campbell gets his second goal of the match. His fourth in Everton colours. And Everton have a two goal advantage. Newcastle pressing the game. Michael Ball misses it. It's a second penalty for Newcastle. Shearer pushed by Unsworth. And it's Shearer against Myra. Myra sent the wrong way, Newcastle back in it. Everton leading by two goals to one. Headed clear, out towards Scott Gemmell! What a finish by Gemmell, right-footed, edge of the penalty area. That's his first goal for Everton. 
and Everton surely have sealed the points now. Walter Smith's pre-deadline signings of Kevin Campbell and Scott Gemmell were proving inspired. On loan Kevin Campbell with his goals and Scott Gemmell with the industry, aggression and passing skills that had made him such a favourite at Nottingham Forest. Gemmell's cut price move from Forest was actually completed just minutes before the transfer deadline. Um, just a late phone call the night before deadline day saying there was a possibility it could happen and then Thursday morning I woke up and it wasn't happening because Forrest wouldn't let me go or they couldn't agree a fee and then uh, halfway through training I just got told to get myself up to Everton so I had about just the, the length of the journey to think about it and once I got here I didn't need much persuading to sign for Everton. So what do you hope to bring to Everton? You've, uh, you're known as a very busy, energetic <laughs> and tidy player. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's difficult to comment on your own attributes really but I'm just going to work very hard for the team and uh, been told I'm a good passer of the ball, try and keep possession and uh, just do the best I can really. You know also about the uh, excellent support that Everton get, particularly at Goodison Park and for a side who uh, have been flirting with relegation for, for far too long that they're still getting 36, 37,000 every week. Yeah, it's quite amazing really. I mean, uh, I've had problems getting tickets for my family and friends as well just because every game's a sellout at Goodison and even the, the away support's amazing as well and it really does make a difference uh, when the team's doing well it helps uh, but also when the team's not doing well then it's, a, it's like having an, an extra man you know it's an old footballing cliche but it really does make a difference. In Scott Gemmell's case we, we needed a little bit extra in midfield we were struggling a little there through injury and suspension and uh, we needed to bring somebody in he's came in He's played exceptionally well for us, chipped in with a goal at Newcastle, which made it comfortable in the last few minutes. It was a massive three points for us, really, and I, was, I would have settled before the game for anyone scoring the goals as long as we won, but obviously after the game and you're reflecting back on it, it's nice to be able to say that I've scored. So I was really pleased to score my first goal for Everton, and it was a very important goal as well. It seemed to be in a bit of slow motion, it seemed to take ages to drop, but again, it's a footballing cliche, but I knew it was in as soon as I hit it. Almost from nowhere, Everton had finally found a striker that gave them the qualities they'd lacked since the sale of Duncan Ferguson. Kevin Campbell, big and brave, powerful and pacing, a centre forward in the finest Goodison tradition. The former Arsenal and Nottingham Forest striker arrived on loan from Trabzon Sport after the president of the Turkish club had racially abused him, calling him a discoloured cannibal. And soon after he joined the club, Campbell was quick to offer his support for the kick racism out of football campaign at a meeting held at Goodison Park. What was it like to be at the very, very sharp end of the, the very nasty comments that were made to you by the, by the, the chairman of Trabs on Sport? Well, it's, it's, um, it's difficult to explain really because you have to be in that situation, but, you know, I felt deeply hurt, you know, and... Um, I just couldn't get my head around it and uh, obviously you know being from England I'm not really used to that although you know people say England's got a, a you know there's racism in England I haven't really suffered anything like what I experienced out there you know um, I was abroad and I was enjoying myself and then all of a sudden a racist slur was made about me and um, as I say it was difficult to get my head around and you know it was something I just couldn't take I'm afraid I just couldn't take it. Uh, he was. Uh, Disappointed by spelling Turkey, uh, he was disappointed by what happened to him there, and was desperate to come back over. And I think that, that the, the relief he's shown um, in terms of getting out of that situation is showing up in his play here, and we're lucky to have him. Everyone talks about the number nine shirt at, at Everton, and, and obviously great players have worn it, you know. But you know, I'm Kevin Campbell, and I could only do what I can do. Obviously, if people play to my strengths and I could do the business, brilliant. If not, you know, the most important thing is Everton at the end of the day and, and, and Premiership status and then hopefully going on from there. How Everton could have done with Campbell earlier in the season. Optimism was the byword on the first day of the new season when Aston Villa came to a packed Goodison Park. Walter Smith and his assistant Archie Knox had won everything there was to win with Glasgow Rangers. And they had money to spend. John Collins arrived from Monaco. 
Marco Materazzi from Italian club Perugia, and Frenchman Oliver Decor from Strasbourg. The new management team knew the size of the task ahead. And Archie Knox was clearly looking forward to the new challenge south of the border, as he and Walter Smith go back a long way in football. Well, we've been associating football for, uh, since the Dundee United days, uh, going back uh, a fair few years now. And uh, then I met up with him at Rangers again. I've been with him as his assistant at Rangers for the last seven years, and hopefully for uh, a spell down at Everton. On day one of the new season, one of the new boys had an opportunity to make an early name for himself. Kicked on towards Spencer, and the referee, Alan Wilkie, points to the spot. The challenge by Ricardo Schimmaker on John Spencer, and Everton have a penalty. John Collins, oh, it's saved by Mark Bosnich, and Everton spurn an early chance, and John Collins has missed the penalty. Penalty after, I think it was seven or eight minutes, and uh, I stepped up, and uh, unfortunately for me, uh, I never hit it great, but the keeper uh, chose the right way. And, and saved it. Um, very disappointing. Uh, as I say, it'd been great to, to get off to a, a winning start and a goal scoring start, but it wasn't to be. Um, I'm not one for getting uh, disheartened and uh, downbeat. Um, I'm, I'm forever optimistic. Away from the football side of things, you've now settled on Merseyside, you, you've bought a house, but it's, uh, it's a long, long way and a completely different culture from, from when you were living in Monaco. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, first and foremost, the weather. I think in Monaco it was t-shirt and shorts most of the year. Outdoor life, you're out all the time. I uh, had the beach in front of me there. Um, but uh, I've came back here to play football, and away from the football, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. My wife's settled, my two daughters are, are enjoying their school, and we've got a lovely house, and a big garden, which the girls love, uh, something they never had in Monaco. We lived in, a, in an apartment. Um, but we've settled down as a family, no problem. I think uh, I'm lucky in, in the respect that I've got a supportive wife, and wherever I go, she's happy, and the, the girls are happy. But in the future, I think our plans are maybe to go back and live in the south of France when my football career's over. The goalless draw was followed by defeated Leicester. Then another reverse, this time at Goodison. Les Ferdinand scoring the only goal in a 1-0 defeat. The Tottenham game also marked the second Everton debut of David Unsworth, sold by Howard Kendall to West Ham 12 months earlier. He moved to Aston Villa pre-season but never played a league game for them, returning to Goodison for £3 million in a transfer that rocked the football world. It was a hard couple of weeks, um, and at the time, you know, I wondered what the hell was going on. Um, it was very difficult. I mean, if I had a great, great uh, 12 months down at West Ham, uh, playing wise, superb, you know, and we we were fairly successful. Um, but you know, I knew that Everton were interested in me, uh, and the whole scenario with Aston Villa was was really just really uh, a, a sidestep because I wanted the Everton thing to come off uh, as well. It's all been well documented, a lot of lies have been written um, that I haven't got involved in at all because, you know, the only people that matter to me are, me, are my family and, and, and the Evertonians and they all know what I'm like uh, and that I'm fully committed to this club and, and that's why I haven't got involved in it all because um, that's all that matters to me. Everton fans love their strikers and homegrown wonder kid Francis Jeffers was to prove one of the lasting highlights of the season. Born in Liverpool, in fact only a stone's throw from Goodison Park, a former season ticket holder who grew up with the great Everton sides of the 1980s. Jeffers first came to prominence in the youth team and was soon establishing a big reputation. The judging of the set pieces, Jeffers! Yeah, last year was a great season for the youth team. We went on to win the FA Youth Cup and uh, there's a few lads now who've gone on to uh, become good professionals and uh, I hope so. I hope like to be uh, playing in the first team with them quite soon. It was a, a wonderful season for the youth side. To, to, to to win the FA Youth Cup, which is the 
is the prime trophy for, for youngsters up and down the country. And uh, it was won in great style as well. Oh yeah, because I mean, uh, Blackburn got to the final, so they were, they were no easy team, but uh, I think uh, we beat them quite convincingly. So uh, that was good, yeah. As a stepping stone, what's it like to move away from playing youth team football to, to start training and playing with the first team? Because there is a huge gap. I haven't really thought about the gap because uh, it's something that I always wanted as a youth player. Uh, I mean, even Colin Arfield say it and any of the youth coaches, it's no good winning the youth cup if none of the players go on to play in the first team. So uh, it was just something that I always wanted to do. And, uh, when I got the chance, it was great. Franny was playing in the uh, view team in, in, in a game against Swindon, as a replay down at Swindon, he scored a hat-trick. And the following Saturday was in the first team, and that's a wonderful example to the rest of them. That the, if you work hard at your game and you show application and dedication, there's, uh, there's an opportunity for you at Everton Football Club, yeah. When I was a kid, I always wanted to play, and uh, when uh, the gaffer gave me a chance uh, this year, I managed to do quite well at Derby. On my own debut, I managed to get a goal, which made it a bit better. And then uh, I've just gone from there, really. Just uh, As I said, I don't like feel under any pressure to score, and I just want to keep my place in the team. I suppose that's what every young kid wants to do when they come into the, the first team. The step up to the first team was taken in his stride, and the goals weren't long in coming. The first win of the season came at the City Ground, Nottingham, in early September. A 2-0 win inspired by Duncan Ferguson. Might break again for Ferguson! It's in, Everton in front. Oh, but it's been ruled out. And the goal won't stand. Michael Ball spots Ferguson, edge of the penalty area. Clipped with his left foot just over the bar, not too far away there from Duncan Ferguson. Everton so close to an opening goal. And Ferguson knows it. Michael Ball, showing good pace left-hand side. It's a cross in towards the near post. Ferguson with the header! A stunning goal, Everton's first of the season. Everton attack, again down the left. Ferguson to Collins. Ball, Ferguson, left foot drive, it's goal number two. Duncan Ferguson with a stunning left foot shot. The goalless draw with Leeds at Goodison did provide some action. Clellan with a long range effort. That wasn't too far away there from Alex Clellan and Nigel Martin scampering back to his own goal line. Leeds build, challenged that by the core there on David Hopkin. And the referee is going to have a word with Dacor and Olivia Dacor has been shown the red card. Next up, a difficult looking match away at Middlesbrough. Everton launching a memorable second half fight back at the Riverside after being two down at half time. Danny Kadamatri in the penalty area, down towards the dead ball line. Was he brought down there? The referee has awarded Everton a penalty kick and it's going to be the Iceman, Michael Ball, who'll take it. Ball versus Swartzer. Ball steps up and reduces the deficit. Excellently struck penalty from young Michael Ball. Everton attack again. Clellan touches it on towards Ferguson. Collins! Collins with a stunning left foot shot. It's two apiece. And the Scotsman with his first goal for Everton. That match witnessed a memorable milestone for a real Everton hero. Dave Watson making his 500th appearance for the club. He joined Everton in 1987 for 900,000 pounds from Norwich City, having started his career at Anfield. Watson, arguably the club's most important post-war signing, and still Everton's best defender despite the passing of the years. A leader in every sense of the word, and with a real eye for goal. It's great to have, to have reached 500, and you know be, be remembered in, uh, in Everton's history, you know, for years to come. That gives you legendary Goodison status and realistically 500 games for any player at any club now it is virtually an impossibility. Yeah, I think so. It's more so these days with the Bosman rule and coming in and um, players tend to move around you know, as soon as the contract is finished. 
Um, I think it'll be uh, very rare if it, if it happens again. Yeah. Favorite games? Um, well, as you say, I mean, like clinching clinching the title at Norwich in eighty eighty seven. Um, that that always sticks in your memory because of the uh, the long coach trip all the way back where the lads were celebrating for. It took us about six hours getting home, and we had Terry Terry Darricott on the microphone singing songs all the way home. That always sticks in your mind. Um, obviously, the the cup win, the FA Cup win, um, the Liverpool four four draw. Um, but also just the, just like the Wimbledon game that springs to mind, you know, for a vital win to keep the club in the Premiership at the time. Um, the Coventry game at the end of last season. Um, you know, it, they're not games that you you'd like to remember because they were for the wrong reasons, but they were so important for the club, you know, and the future of the club. The arrival of Walter Smith had many predicting the rapid demise of Watson's Everton career. Walter Smith had other ideas. He appointed him to the first team coaching staff. How different a role is it for you on a day-to-day -day basis? It's just um, it's just getting in earlier of a morning, um, sitting in on the managers' meetings, finding out what we're planning out for the, for that day, for that week. Um, I you know giving ideas on certain players that you might like and what they might like, and just generally bouncing ideas off each other. First and foremost, I'm a player and I've got to uh, keep myself fit. Um, I didn't start off in the team at the beginning of the season. Um, but I was keeping myself in good nick anyway, you know, if called upon. And um, we picked up a couple of injuries early on, so I got my chance. And um, so far, so good. I haven't let anyone down. Um, and I've, I've, I've just got to carry on, you know, training as hard as I can and um, try and keep me place on the side. The second Premiership victory of the season came at, of all places, Wimbledon. Long range effort catches Thomas Myra out, and Wimbledon go in front. Everton building with some patience. Ball left hand side. Kadamatri left edge of the penalty area. Look for support inside the box. Past his man. Low shot. What a finish from Danny Kadamatri, and Everton a level. Unsworth for Everton. Crossing towards Ferguson! 2 1, it's the big man again. Another new face and a much needed striker was signed in the week before the Merseyside derby. Ibrahima Bakayoko was the big money capture from Montpellier. The Ivory Coast international came to Everton with quite a reputation and was just inches away from becoming a derby match hero. Bakayoko. Good pace down the right-hand side of Fowler with a challenge. And it's a free kick for Everton. Bakayoko making an early impact. Delivered in towards the near post. Bakayoko! Inches away from opening his account in the derby match of all games. So Everton still looking for their first home win in the league and indeed their first Premiership goal at Goodison when Manchester United came to town. Deep cross again towards the far post. It's off short. Calamity in the Everton defence. Ball delivers it towards Ferguson! Everton back in it. United lead 2-1. Andy Cole. Blomquist, good save by Myra. Blomquist. Oh, it's 4-1 for United. Everton's Worthington Cup campaign began with a second round tie with first division Huddersfield. It's one in the air, chance for Watson! David Watson. And Huddersfield coming back into this game. Myra drops it, a chance for Wayne Allison, and he equalises. Delivered towards Stewart with a chance. Huddersfielder in front on the night and on aggregate. Dakar with the free kick. Oh, what a rasping effort from Olivia Dakar. Punched away as far as John Oster. Chance for Materazzi. What a finish from the Italian. In round three, he was back to the Riverside to face Brian Robson's Middlesbrough. And it's Mark Summerbell, the goal scorer. Flicked on by Bakayoko, that's a poor clearance. Mike break for Ferguson! On the volley, left-footed. What a stunning equaliser from Duncan.
Duncan Ferguson. Bakayoko steals it. And he's got Hutchison with him. Bakayoko goes alone. That's his first goal for Everton. Hutchison picks up possession for Everton. Inside the box now. Hutchison with a low drive. Coming back into this game and it breaks the far post for Hamilton. Ricard was that offside. Myra appeals. It was a Goodison reunion in the fourth round of the Worthington Cup. Peter Reid brought high flying Sunderland to Goodison. Collins over the free kick, left footed into the top corner. That's the equaliser from John Collins. Bakayoko. Oh, he's missed it. And Sunderland are through. Everton's megastore attracted the media's attention and also John Collins and Oliver Decor both took time out from training to see what the fuss was about. Everton have installed a video booth, the latest in high-tech communications, allowing fans to speak to both managers and players. Questions and answers are recorded and then broadcast on TV Everton on match days. It's a big favourite, especially with the younger fans. My question is for John Collins. Why did you come to England instead of staying in France? Well, I think it's common knowledge that I came because I wanted to try and play, play in the English Premiership. I heard so much about it, watched it on television, I thought I'd give it a try. I tell you, it certainly wasn't for the weather. <laughs> Football supporters are never short of a few words. For years, they've been voicing their opinions through fanzines and the club programme. I think the score tonight will be 1 0. Hopefully, Alan Shearer won't play and Everton will score just five minutes from the end and get our first home win of the season. The long wait for that elusive first home win became almost unbearable for manager and fans. Goes down and the referee points to the spot. Carl Saran has conceded a penalty. Hutchison celebrates almost as though he's got a goal. Everton have only been in the lead once in the Premiership this season. Call it twice. The ground reverberates to a very, very rare sound of Goodison this season. An Everton goal. Grant. Not a bad ball. Bakayoko using his pace. And he's done well here. Bakayoko, can he score? Good save from Gibbon. He's still there, Bakayoko. And Newcastle survive for the moment. And then Dunk was pretty close with the shot just over the bar. But he could be on the end of things again here as Hutchison goes forward. Bakayoko, the target! That was close. The final whistle put everyone out of their misery. But was this just a temporary respite for Walter Smith and the suffering supporters? As for Newcastle, it seemed they'd lost their way. But what if Duncan Ferguson was back, spearheading the attack? On that Monday night, the rumours were growing that Everton chairman Peter Johnson had agreed to sell his captain to Newcastle. But to Walter Smith's disbelief, the deal was done. Within 48 hours, Duncan Ferguson had joined Newcastle for £8 million. The first game in the post-Ferguson era was away at promoted Charlton Athletic, who topped the Premiership early in the season. Redburn charges it down, now, three on three. Redburn, Hunt, Mendonca. Morton are trying to make the fourth man. Redburn goes alone! Fine save, Thomas Myra. Everything to Carl Tyler's right, including Andy Hunt. The oh, how about a great header! Oh, it's off the post! What a fantastic header from Andy Hunt. It'll come now for Kinsella with a chance to strike it. Oh, he wanted a little extra room. He gets a shot in. Great save by Myra. Now Morton with a drive. What a fine save by Myra. And Collins brings it away, showing neat footwork. Finding Grant. Everton breaking. Looking for Katamatsuri. Katamatsuri's in here. Oh, it's going to be a goal for Everton. Katamatsuri has put Everton in front. And somewhat against the run of play, Everton have taken the lead right in the dying seconds of this first half. Katamatsu and Mills. Oh, Katamatsu's got away. Oh, no, he hasn't. Now it's Danny Mills. Steve Jones is outside, and Mills with a drive. Now Jones possibly again. 
Jones waiting for it, it hasn't come out to him, Morton gets in first. Morton away from one challenge, trying to get away from Dunn, trying to get away from Hutchinson, oh, and Everton have got a break on with Bakayoko, it's a bright opening to the second half. Rufus has defended, Bakayoko's away from him, he's into the penalty area, he goes down, penalty given, penalty given against Mark Kinsella, ball scored, Everton's winner on Monday night. Can he score again here at the Valley? Oh, a fine save by Ennis! Time not on Charlton's side, 19 minutes to go. Kinsella setting himself for the strike. It is a strike from Kinsella. Oh, there it is! Mark Kinsella with a fabulous strike from directly from the free kick. What a goal! It's 1-1. With everything to play for, but here's Bakayoko. Then it comes a long way. It's for Hutchinson. Now Kanamatri. Oh, it's there. Everton have bounced back within seconds. Kanamatri has scored. And Everton are back in front. Just seconds after Charlton levelled it up. The defending was not all that positive. And Everton have the lead once again with Danny Kanamatri. Heavy criticism following the sale of Duncan Ferguson and revelations regarding the club's financial state led to Peter Johnson's resignation in late November. The new dream team in the boardroom and the club's most successful ever chairman, Sir Philip Carter, was back at the helm, along with lifelong blue, theatrical impresario Bill Kenwright. Make no mistake, Peter Johnson was committed to this club. Make no mistake of that at all. He didn't want to lose out there. He didn't want to bring Everton down, he didn't want relegation. He wanted this club to succeed. And I think he'll be the first to admit that he's failed. And he has now made a decision. Uh, he asked me to be deputy chairman. There was nothing forced on him. He asked Philip to be chairman. And I think that shows that he has now got the genuine feelings for Everton and the uppermost that he's asked us to, to do it. He knows where our hearts are, and uh, he will now go away and leave us to get on with it. Bill Kenwright had actually lost out in a power struggle to Peter Johnson five years earlier. This time, the club's new deputy chairman fully intended to see through a strategy to launch a takeover bid. Somebody said to me, hasn't it been terrible for you the last four years, five years, seven years, eight years, uh, of lack of success with with the obvious exception of the cup final. And I say, yeah, but it's terrible. But it's Everton. And I'd rather have bad Everton than good anything else. I just love Everton, and uh, I believe we've got the best fan base in the world. I know every club says that. We actually have. Our supporters are extraordinary. Money cannot buy success. What? Money helps. There's no shadow of that money. And money's necessary, and money's got to be there. But, you know, what a football club needs is confidence from the top to the bottom. At Saturday, when we got the first goal, we started stroking the ball around. When we got the second goal, we started stroking about even more. And I, I turned to Walter and he looked at me and said, confidence. I think he said confidence. I can't quite understand most of the things he says, but I'm sure he said confidence to me. And uh, I think the whole, I want to see Everton fans not like they were at Charlton before the game, not like they were at Coventry, not like they were at the other away games and home games this season, miserable, heads down, sort of despairing. I want to see them smiling and laughing and uh, having, um, having a good time on a Saturday. I just think we're different. I, no, I'll rephrase that. I know we're different. I sat at the Manchester United game next to two rabid Evertonians. They were jumping up and down, they were cursing them, oh, when anyone missed the goal. They were gutted when we lost. Peter Reid and Adrian Heath. Now, you don't, get, you don't get that with other clubs. The love that these people have for this club, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it, it is a strange, strange thing that you can't explain, you can't quantify. I think you're a blue. I think, you know, if, when I was four years old, something had gone, you're red, you're not blue, my whole life would have been different. Everything about my life would have been different. Thank the Lord it went, you're blue. I think we're different.
The first game for the new look Goodison power base was at Goodison against Gianluca Vialli's improving Chelsea. Bakayoko, not too far away. A stunning right foot shot there. Kadamachi and a tussle there with Desai. Kadamachi comes off best inside the box. Onto his right foot. Good save by the Hoy. Kadamachi went really close. Kadamachi again inside the box. Right foot shot, not too far away. The Hoy was beaten. And Kadamachi again going close. A fantastic first Premiership goal for Ibrahima Bakayoko meant another three priceless points against fellow struggler Southampton. What a finish from Bakayoko, his first Premiership goal for Everton. A cartwheel to celebrate, and Everton in front. Bakayoko worked it onto his right foot and fairly thundered it past the keeper. Everton attack again, in towards the near post. Oh, what a terrific save there by Jones. Good work from Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Takes it forward towards Bakayoko, edge of the box. Great save again. Bakayoko is making an impact this afternoon. And it's Cleland. Nudges it out to Nadal. Fall back to Cleland. That's the woodwork. From Alex Cleland. Bakayoko. Might profit from that mistake. He's in the penalty area. Oh, not too far away. Bakayoko. Everton build again. And once more, it's Ibrahima Bakayoko. In towards the edge of the box. Waits for support. Onto his left foot. Tries a shot. Another stunning save. Everton. Still trying to find another way through the Southampton defence. Towards Cleland again, tries his luck from distance. But against West Ham at Upton Park, the Blues didn't live up to expectations. West Ham attack. Down the Everton right hand side. Crossed in towards the far post. Oh, it's deceived Myra. It looked like a cross. Everton with a chance for Danny Kanamatari with the equaliser. No mistake from close range. And Everton have made it one apiece. West Ham press once more. Oh, and Myra's beaten by the bounce. And the only plus point from a trip to White Hart Lane was another goal for Ibrahima Bakayoko. Cross towards Bakayoko with a diving header. And he's got another one, the Ivory Coast striker, and another cartwheel. Everton's inability to find the net at Goodison was causing real heartache, with Leicester City's visit producing another stalemate. Chance for Cotty, what a save from Myra. Tony Cotty, the former blue, and Everton with Kadamatri again. Casey Keller to the Leicester rescue. Goalkeeping wasn't so much of a problem. Thomas Myra established as the club's number one choice. But given added competition following the arrival earlier in the season of Steve Simonson from Tranmere Rovers. The deal was reported to be worth a record three and a half million pounds. Everton's down payment around a third of that figure. Simonson arrived from Prenton Park with a terrific reputation. I'm just enjoying it, you know, I mean, it, it, I was pitched in in Tramia's first team and um, from then on I've just enjoyed it really, um, as anybody would, it's a, it's a taste of the big time as they say, but um, I'm enjoying it, I've, I've, as I say, I've only played a few games, but I'm a goalkeeper, I'm only young and I've got a lot of games left in us and hopefully they'll be here at Everton. Everton had already appointed Chris Woods as their new goalkeeping coach. Woods was a former top keeper himself, as clubs such as Nottingham Forest, Rangers and Sheffield Wednesday. So I've experienced quite a few things, good things, bad things, but um, if I can pass on anything that I've learnt to um, the goalkeepers here at Everton, um, and it helps them, then um, that's part of my job done. It's, it's nice to be able to come and work with um, such talented keepers, um, and they're all willing to work as well, uh, which makes my job a little bit easier. Um, and like I say, it's, a, it's a, um, a joy for me to come in and work with them, really.
If anyone should know about the highs and lows of a sporting life, then it's Olympic high jumper Steve Smith. An Everton fan since boyhood, he remembers his favourite games, which include that FA Cup final win against Manchester United. I think one of the fantastic things about Everton is it's just when everybody thinks we're, we're, we're down for a tonkin, we come out and produce the goods and win. And uh, you know, I think Ride out scored pretty early on, didn't he? And, uh, and you know, it was just a, a question of holding on. But uh, I don't think it was one of the, the all-time Wembley classics, classics for the neutral, but for, for us Evertonians, it was uh, absolutely fabulous. I, mean, I was only watching the other day the, the Wimbledon game and, uh, and Barry Owen scored that absolutely fabulous goal. Uh, he wanted to pull his 2-2. Oh, Horn! Marvellous shot from Barry Horn! And then more recently, the, the, the Coventry game. Uh, I remember sitting there before the game and saying to, to, uh, to my dad, you know, if, if I had 40,000 people behind me giving me this much support, you'd have to put me on the pole vault, you know, because it was just absolutely amazing, the atmosphere. and gets to it strongly. Drops for Gareth Farrelly again! Is this an Everton rebound? <laughs> I'm always the optimist. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of the people who, you know, we can be 3 0 down uh, with a minute to go and I'll still be, I'll still be in the stand hoping that we'll, uh, we'll get back. Uh, so I hope so. I mean, there's a. You know, we are, we are playing as a team, it's just a question of being able to score. Uh, as I say, we, we have got quality. Uh, I hope so. You know, that, that's all I can say, really. I really, really, really do hope so. Back to the Premiership action. The trip to Pride Park in February was always going to be tough, but it marked the full debut of Francis Jeffords. Barbie. Bakayoko. Space here for Dacour. Now Jeffers. Bambi, they've scored! A goal for Everton. Their first of 1999 in the Premiership. And the honour of getting it goes to Nick Bambi. And they're back defending against one shot. Burton trying to get to the cross. He's got that. Dion Burton for Derby County. Stimats. Crafting the pass for Dorigo. One jump! Good stop by the goalkeeper. Leon Burton went in. Jeff has made enough of an impression to suggest more was to come. Given the goal scoring drought at Goodison that had existed for most of the season, the home game with Middlesbrough was a little short of astonishing. Middlesbrough, all kinds of problems with their injuries. And so they've recalled Andy Campbell from loan with Sheffield United to uh, partner Mikel Beck up front. Hamilton Rickard on the bench. But the first attack is a goal for Everton after just a minute's play, and Nicky Barmby has scored it. Forty three seconds on the clock. And the cross was perfectly played for Barmby coming in between the defenders and there's a big inquest already at the back for Middlesbrough. <laughs> Jeffers taking it on. And Jeffers left foot. A shot well covered by the goalkeeper. Jeffers. Well, that's a great ball, and that's 2 0. And Barbie's done it again. The confidence is back at Goodison, and Everton and their fans are reveling in it. Jeffers involved, Hutchison, and then Barbie, just a nick over the goalkeeper. 2-0, 16 minutes gone, and Everton completely in charge. Has 
tackle and puts it into the danger area. And it's still not clear. Forced to save out of Mura. A good save it was too. Now Jeffers. Hutchison to his left. Barmby also arriving. Jeffers! Full of confidence. 18 only last month. Goal against Coventry in the Cup on Saturday. Jeffers who won it. And that's a deflection from Vickers. It's uh, only gone to Hutchison who's got it back. Shot well. And there's the goal. Shakur has got what he's been looking for. 3 0. Hutchison played an important part in that. The Frenchman was lurking, looking for the chance, finished it off calmly and precisely. Hutchison shot, but Schwarzer couldn't hold. Gordon couldn't get there. Shakur could. 62 minutes played. And Everton, well, wonder of wonders, they lead at Goodison Park by three goals to nil. Everybody bar Mura in the middles for a half for Everton. The kick that was given. Gordon clearly asking what for. Yep, Gascoigne, Campbell, Musto forming the wall. Townsend making the fifth. and Matarazzi are the options here. The core left edge of your picture, Matarazzi the side. Matarazzi with the left foot? Yes. And a goal! 4-0, Everton romping away with it. Matarazzi's first of the season. Kaur runs over it, the wall breaks, and just inside the far post. And that's 5-0. And Unsworth has added to Middlesbrough's woes. Wherever you look, David Unsworth, who's a pretty serious character, had an absolutely free header and found Mark Schwarzer completely off balance on his heels. 5 0. But one of the few guarantees in life is a difficult match with Wimbledon. A long clearance downfield, and Watson's missed it, and Jason Yule in towards the edge of the box, left foot shot. And Thomas Meyer have beaten, mistake by Watson. And Yule puts Wimbledon in front. And a mile tree for Everton as they search for an equaliser. Rides one challenge, has Jeffers in the middle. Jeffers! With a headed equaliser for Everton. Though the league form had been decidedly patchy, the FA Cup run was gathering momentum. The third round tie of Bristol City had giant killer written all over it. Ibrahima Bakayoko obviously didn't understand. It was a home draw with first of his Nipswich in round four. Ipswich with a reputation for solid defending. In the fifth round of the world's most famous knockout competition, it was Coventry who provided the opposition. Everton again with home advantage. John Oster, right foot shot into the corner. Headman didn't have a prayer. McAllister with a free kick. But the FA Cup dream for 99 was to perish at Newcastle. The 4 1 defeat certainly flattered Newcastle. Everton with only David Unsworth's stunning goal as a consolation.
Unsworth doesn't score many, no wonder he enjoyed it. Back in the Premiership, the excellent winner Blackburn was followed by a run of defeats. At home to double winners Arsenal. Pollard! Whoa! Everton caught square at the back. And Uriah Rennie's having a word with Martin Keogh and Don Hutchison. And it's a red card for Don Hutchison. Hutchison sent off. Bacor changed there by Manu Petit. Bacor goes down. And it's a sending off for Arsenal. Emmanuel Petit. Unsworth challenge, the referee points to the spot. And it's Bergkamp against Thomas Myra. 2-0 Arsenal. No joy either at Old Trafford against in for Manchester United. Solskjaer plays the 1-2. Solskjaer! United in front. Neville. 2-0. Again Everton beaten. Beckham with a free kick. Oh, it's a Beckham classic. Hutchison drives it in. What a stunning finish from Hutchison. The Derby match at Anfield ended Everton's five-year unbeaten run. Before the match, a minute's silence to remember the victims of the Hillsborough disaster ten years ago. Michael Ball with the throw-in. In towards the edge of the Liverpool penalty area, headed away by Staunton, breaks for that core. The core with the shot! Everton in front, inside the first minute, it's the Frenchman, Olivier Decor. What a finish that was, left foot shot. Liverpool press, crossing towards the penalty area and a challenge by Matarazzi on Paul Lintz is illegal. Fowler with the penalty against Thomas Myra. Low to Myra's left and Myra couldn't keep it out. It's one apiece. Corner by Berger, flicked on by McManaman. and Fowler again! Gemmel on the line, couldn't prevent it. It's another goal for Fowler and Liverpool lead 2-1. Michael Branch, what a challenge there by Staunton on Branch. And the referee awards a free kick to Everton. James trying to line the wall up. He's happy with it now. Four-man wall, it looks as though it's going to be Matarazzi. Five-man wall, in fact. Matarazzi with his left foot. Oh, against the post! Matarazzi so close to an equaliser. Francis Jeffers enters the derby match fray. Corner. Redknapp delivers it deep. Headed away by Olivia Dacor. Berger with a shot! And Liverpool go 3-1 in front. The long-range effort. Unsworth with a long clearance. Everton desperately need a goal to try and get back into this one. Campbell touches it on to Jeffers. What a finish from young Francis Jeffers. On the turn, into the top corner. It's 3-2. Is there hope yet for Everton in the Merseyside derby? Headed away. Everton pressing for all their worth. Unsworth with a long-range header into the box. Kadamatri, a chance! Off the line there by Steven Gerrard. And Kadamati, having a word with the referee, is having color this year, clean pulled off him. Closing stages, Gamble clips it forward into the path of Campbell. Campbell in the clear, can he control it? Breaks for Kadamati perhaps. Off the line from Gerrard again. And Kadamati can't believe it. Francis Jeffers' goal against Sheffield Wednesday couldn't prevent that appalling defeat. The stage was hopefully set for a march away from the relegation zone. Victories against Coventry and Newcastle were inspired by Goodison's new dynamic duo, Kevin Campbell and Scott Gunning. A win in the next game against Charlton at Goodison would open up a sizeable gap between Everton and the chasing group and would mean the magic 40-point barrier being reached with three games left to play. Yeah, I think it would have been even bigger if we lost it at Newcastle. Um, but... Um, it's, um, there's talk of 40 points. I don't really know what the target is because you know teams can go on runs. Um, but um, looking at other teams' runnings, they've got. I know they've got games in hand on us, but um, I think it is better to have the points. And we are at home for two games, which, considering our, our home form wasn't too great at the start of the season, if we can produce performances like we did against Coventry, and I'm sure we can, I think we'll be well, we will be safe. Um, we would 
see Charlton being in the same position as ourselves, um, having to win the match, the same as we have to try and go out and win the match. Um, if we do manage to win, we know that we create an eight-point gap with three games left. So the onus would be firmly on Charlton then. They, on the other hand, will see us getting pegged back. So you've got a classic relegation encounter where um, a draw for either team wouldn't really be the result that they're looking for. At this stage, we're looking, I think, both the teams to try and gain wins. So I see a cracking match in prospect. Walter Smith knew nothing would actually be decided on the outcome of the game, but agreed that gave Everton a great chance to escape from trouble. Make no mistake about it, the Charlton match was the most important game of the season so far. And the fans too were well aware of exactly what was at stake. Well, of course it is, yeah, we've got to win, haven't we? Because if we win, we're basically safe, aren't we? So see if we win, not going to get relegated, are we? Because Charlton are going to go down with Blackburn. We've got to win today, haven't we? Yeah, we're going to win. We've been there before. We're not used to winning too much, so uh, we've enjoyed it this year. Whatever happens, it's been good. Goodison Park was sold out. 40,000 plus fans packing the stadium. Tension, nerves, fear and optimism in equal measure. This was a match Everton simply had to win. No handball. This is Hutchison. And he gets it through. Don Hutchison. But he did go on, and the shot really went through Pedersen. Campbell, who's just got himself on the wrong side. Campbell has got himself into space. Took one extra touch too many, but was able to recover. And Yauch looks back and says, where were you all? Five in five for Kevin Campbell. But how he was allowed the second chance and how the shot got through, Charlton defenders and goalkeeper would know. He went down Pedersen for the first shot. Rufus was on the deck and nobody covering across the middle. Tyler just watched it in. Two nothing to Everton. And here's Pringle! Good save by Meyer to an acrobatic attempt by Martin Pringle. And here's Jeffers. And still. Jeffers, Campbell, Scott Gammon has come up as well, here's Campbell, it's just too easy, three man break, a third goal conceded, and he just glances the ball in from Francis Jeffers Cross to make it a 3-0. And his sixth goal of this lone spell of such great benefit to Everton. And there's a break with Campbell. And it's on again as Charlton have so many players forward. And here's Jeffers. And it's four. It's a fine goal, quick break, very well finished by the 18-year-old. And uh, quality of finish that belies Jeffers' years. Goal difference, and they're going to be given an opportunity here with Pringle going down under pressure from Unsworth. Everton's season so far had meant mixed reviews in the press. With David Prentice, the Everton correspondent for the Liverpool Echo, 
believes there were mitigating factors for a season that perhaps failed to hit the heights. Uh, there are a number of factors. I mean, the fact that there's no, no money again to spend, uh, the boardroom upheaval, uh, players chopping and changing, injuries again haven't helped them, disciplinary records being bad, you could go on. There have been a number of factors, but there have been signs at the other end that you know things are turning around a little bit, and hopefully if they can uh, make a decent start next season, it won't be quite as traumatic this, this time. So just a point needed to guarantee survival. But it didn't come at Chelsea despite another wonder strike from Francis Jeffers. Everton on the wrong end of a 3-1 defeat. The final home game of the season was against West Ham, who started the day in sixth place in the Premiership. But they were rocked to their very core by a stunning Everton performance. Everton in front, and Kevin Campbell has got another one. Campbell forced it over the line from close range after David Unsworth had had two sh shots saved there by the West Ham keeper. First with the header, and Campbell right on cue to force it over the line. Everton building again in towards the penalty area. What's oh, a good save there by Shaka Hislop from Francis Jeffers. Stunning right foot shot. Hutchison forward to Scott Gamble as well to keep it in. Glides his way past one man, then another. Well, was he brought down? Lomas brought him down, and the referee has awarded a penalty. So it's Michael Ball. He missed his last penalty kick back in November. Down at Charlton, but it's Michael Ball against Shaka Hislop. And Ball converts it with great aplomb. Everton, double their advantage. Excellent penalty from Michael Ball. And he salutes the fans, and they salute him. Everton again forcing West Ham back. Hutchison on towards Campbell. Might break for Jeffers, miscontrols it. Hutchison with a rasping right foot drive. Shaka Hislop never saw it. And the points are Everton's now 3 0 before the half time break. Good control initially from Hutchison. Cross from Campbell. Jeffers miscontrolled it. It sat up perfectly for Hutchison's finish. Scott Campbell, Campbell on the move, so too is Jeffers. David Weir picks out the run of Campbell, a chance for a fourth. Clinical finish from Kevin Campbell. He likes to get his goals in pairs. That's another two at Goodison Park. And Everton 4-0 up. Weir and Campbell combining perfectly. And Campbell with a clinical and precise finish. And the fans Salute another two goals from Kevin Campbell. Good play there from Francis Jeffers. Jeffers again. Tries a long range effort, not too far away. This time with his left foot. And Shaka Hislop delighted that that one wasn't on target. Everton playing some excellent football in total command here. A chance for Campbell inside the box for his hat trick! Left foot finish, and Kevin Campbell gets his first hat trick for Everton. And the Gladys Street salute, the hero who's fast becoming a Goodison legend. Gets the warm embraces from Dacor and Unsworth. Excellent left foot finish, and a hat trick for Kevin Campbell. Dakor for Everton, links up nicely there with Hutchison. Long range effort, touch the side there from Dakor's long range effort. Good save from Shaka Hislop. No wonder Walter Smith smiling. Hutchison with the corner, flicked on by David Weir. Jeffers arrives with goal number six. It deserves that goal for his efforts throughout the afternoon. Francis Jeffers wraps up the points. They're well and truly sealed. Six goals to nil. Hutchison with a floated corner, flicked on by Weir. And Jeffers, well, he couldn't miss from three yards. 
but he was in the right place at the right time. The aftermatch celebrations didn't amount to a real lap of honour. It was more an acknowledgement from the players of the part played by Everton's incredibly loyal supporters. You must have thought the hat trick was on. It looked easy. Well, it's, it's never easy. Um, anybody could tell you, but you know, if you put the work in, you get the rewards. And today we put the work in, and um, gladly I got the goals. But you know, I thought everybody played well today, especially um, Oliver De Cor, Scott Gemmell, and Don Hutchison played marvellous. And the boys at the back done well, keeping you know the door closed. Didn't really give West Ham many chances where West Ham are a really creative side. So, um, you know, I'm pleased about that and I'm pleased Fanny Jeffers got a goal as well because, you know, he works so hard and, you know, he's a gifted lad and uh, it, it will be good for him. Is that nine goals in seven games now? Um, if my maths is right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Carling Player of the Month for April? Yeah, well, the lads were saying before, you know, um, that I had to put a good performance in because I don't think you're going to get the Carling Man of the, man of the Month and, and rest on your laurels. But, as I say, you know, the team's been playing to my strength since I've come and um, I've proved I could score goals. And um, if they can play to my strengths and continue to do that, if things could get sorted out, I know I'll score goals in the Premier League. And the fans deserve that today, don't they? Of course, I think the fans have been absolutely marvellous. And um, there's, been, I think, 40,000 again here today. And uh, not many teams could, could, could say that, you know, uh, fighting relegation and have 40,000, you know, fanatical fans. And it, it, it means a lot to them. Now, next week, they can maybe relax a little bit and enjoy the game for once. And it, it doesn't have to go to the last game. And they've adopted you as a, as a bit of a hero already. Well, I think um, it's that mystic number nine shirt and uh, it seemed to be working a bit of magic for me. And uh, as I say, hopefully I could get my future sorted out and, and keep the number nine shirt because um, there's been some great centre forwards who's worn that shirt. And I'd like to if I can follow in the, those footsteps. So it's important for me to, to, to score goals in the number nine shirt. The last match of the Premiership season was at the Dell. Everton absolutely safe, but Southampton needed to win to guarantee their place in football's top flight. The season was over, but manager Walter Smith and the players were already looking forward to better times ahead at Goodison next season. I think uh, all in all, like I said, if you look at the squad, they are capable of doing very well. We've got to keep working hard, analyse analyse the matches, spot our weaknesses and work on the weaknesses. The fans have come out in numbers and have been very positive, which is you know makes a difference to the players because if, if you start picking up negative vibes from the fans, it can it can suffer. I don't think a lot of the clubs who have been involved um, in a relegation battle this season have had as many problems maybe on and off the pitch as, as we've had. So if things like that can settle down and we can get a bit more consistency about our group of players and a bit more consistency um, and a bit of knowledge about what's happening with the club off the field, then I feel that everybody can, can settle down and uh, you know, Everton will have a good future. The 1998-99 season will be remembered for many things and for the contribution made by many players. In the end, all of them played their part in maintaining Everton's status in the Premiership but a gigantic role was played by Kevin Campbell. His physical presence, ability to link the play, and ultimately his goals helped keep Everton afloat.